Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. In this video, I'll test the sleep tracking, heart rate and step counting accuracy of the Apple Watch Series 6. For the sleep prediction, I compared the Apple Watch against a scientific portable EEG device. For the heart rate test, I compared it against this consumer ECG device, the Polar H10 chest strap, both during exercise and during sleep. Finally, I tested the step counting accuracy by taking exactly 4,000 steps. And for this, I also compared the Apple Watch to several other smartwatches. As always, I don't want to waste your time. So timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. For the sleep test, I wore the Apple Watch to bed last night. At the same time, I wore the scientific portable EEG monitor and I recorded myself with an infrared camera. The EEG device measures brain waves and muscle movements. It's called the Hypnodyne Z-Max and is used by several of my colleagues in their scientific studies. I manually went through the recording of the EEG and I scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages and I compared these results with the Apple Watch results. Finally, I used the infrared recording to check what my movements were like when the Apple Watch predicted I was awake. Let's dive into the results. Here you can see the sleep tracking of the Apple Watch over time for one night. As you can see, by default, the Apple Watch just says if I'm awake or asleep, and it doesn't tell me anything about my sleep stages. So for now, I wanna check three things. First of all, did the watch correctly predict when I fell asleep? So here it says one o'clock. Second, did it correctly predict when I woke up? And third, did it notice when I woke up in between? Now to check that, on top here I plotted the sleep stages according to the scientific EEG device. Now as you can see here we have all the different sleep stages, so awake, REM, light and deep. But for now we just care about the difference of being awake and being in any of the three sleep stages. As you can see, most of the times that I woke up during the night, the Apple Watch was also able to detect that I was awake, so most of these match pretty well. And when I look back at the infrared videos, I could also see that in most of these cases, I clearly moved the arm that I was wearing the Apple Watch on. So it probably used that motion to detect that I was awake. Now you can also see one moment here where the EEG device says I was awake, but the Apple Watch did not detect it. And when I went back to the video recording of that moment, I did move and I also moved one of my arms, but this was the arm that I was wearing other wearables on and not the Apple Watch. So that might be the reason why the Apple Watch missed this. I would also say that the Apple Watch is pretty good at detecting when I woke up here and it also detected these moments of wakefulness before I actually woke up. The only thing I would say that the Apple Watch was not so good at is detecting the moment where I fell asleep. So as you can see I went to bed at around 1 o'clock but I didn't fall asleep until roughly 1.15. But I of course lay in bed still for about 15 minutes before actually falling asleep. So on the EEG I could clearly see I was still awake but the Apple Watch cannot distinguish between me lying still in bed and actually being asleep. This is of course a general problem of these types of devices that rely on motion to detect if you're awake or asleep. Overall I would say that the Apple Watch seems to do okay at sleep tracking so the functionalities are still very limited so it can only detect awake and asleep. In a future video I will use different apps for the Apple Watch that can use the sensors of the Apple Watch to detect these different sleep stages like REM sleep, light sleep and deep sleep and I will test how accurate they are. In recent tests I found that both the Fitbit Sense and the Withings Scan Watch had trouble recording my proper heart rate. To test if the heart rate measurements of the Apple Watch are more accurate, I compared it against the Polar H10 chest strap, which is generally considered to be one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate tracking. I wore both the Apple Watch and the Polar H10 chest strap for two spinning sessions, a weightlifting session, and during one night of sleep. This way I can check the heart rate at different heart rate ranges. So here I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 on the horizontal axis and the Apple Watch on the vertical axis. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement and this blue line indicates perfect agreement between the two. So if a dot is around this blue line, it means that the Apple Watch and the Polar H10 agree. So for instance, if we take this point here, we see that the heart rate according to the Polar is a little bit over 80 and it's also around 80 for the Apple Watch. And what I would say in general is that the Apple Watch is doing really great. 
So on the bottom here, we have my low heart rate during sleep. There's just these five heart rate measurements here that are a little bit higher than they're supposed to be, but this is not a big deal. And also at the really high heart rate ranges, the Apple Watch is doing really great. They're almost perfectly agreeing between the Apple Watch and the Polar chest strap, and also here in the middle. So based on this, we can already say that the Apple Watch is doing really great at heart rate tracking. But let's look at some specific examples. Here I plotted my heart rate over time for one of my spinning sessions, which lasted about 45 minutes, as you can see. In red, I plotted my heart rate according to the Apple Watch and in blue, my heart rate according to the Polar H10. And as you can see, they almost perfectly overlap. You can almost not see the heart rate of the Apple Watch because it so perfectly overlaps the heart rate of the Polar H10. As you can see, I divided my spinning session into four segments where I took a break in between. And in all these breaks, it clearly detected the rise and fall of my heart rate. You can see that even these small dips here and these small increases are all detected by the Apple Watch. So I would say that's pretty great. But let's also have a look at another spinning session. So here's my spinning session from the next day, again divided over four segments with the Apple Watch in red and the Polar H10 in blue. And again, it's almost perfectly overlapping. I'm really amazed at the accuracy of the Apple Watch. I think it's really great that a wrist-based monitor is so accurate. But let's also have a look at weightlifting, where my arms might be moving more than during spinning. So here I plotted that weightlifting session over time. And as you can see, it was only about 20, 25 minutes long. And the Apple Watch again is pretty good at following the heart rate of the Polar H10 chest strap. There are some minor disagreements like here, but this I would say is no big deal. Overall, the Apple Watch is doing pretty great. Now let's put these results into some context. On the left here, I've plotted the results I just showed you for the Apple Watch. In the middle, this is a similar experiment I did for the Fitbit Sense. And on the right, a similar experiment I did for the Withing Scan Watch. And as you can see, the agreement for the Apple Watch is pretty great, where the Apple Watch has a negligible amount of deviating heart rate measurements compared to that of the Sense and the Scan Watch. If you want to know more about the different experiments I've done with the Fitbit Sense and the Withing Scan Watch, find them on my channel or linked in the description below. To test the step counting accuracy of the Apple Watch, I took exactly 4,000 steps, which I counted using this tally counter. During the test, I wore the Apple Watch on my right arm and I alternated using the tally counter in my right and left hand every 1,000 steps. As I said, four times I took exactly 1,000 steps, which I counted using this tally counter, and I alternated counting with the tally counter between my right hand and my left hand because it might introduce a bias. And this is the number of steps that the Apple Watch counted. Now, if these would perfectly agree with the manual step counter, these would all be exactly 1000. But as you can see, they're pretty close. The biggest deviation here is 41 steps. If we compare this to some other fitness trackers that I use at the same time, so the Huawei Watch Fit, Fitbit Sense, and this should be Garmin Venue SQ, we can see that they're pretty similar. We actually see that the Apple Watch sometimes undercounts, which is for me rare. Usually fitness trackers overcount for me, especially the Fitbit Sense. And then if we take the total of these, which should be each 4,000 steps, we see that each fitness tracker is pretty close. Again, the Fitbit Sense overcounts the most, which is what I've seen before for myself with Fitbits, but the other ones are all within 70 steps of the 4,000. So both the Apple Watch, the Huawei, and the Garmin. So overall, I would say that the Apple Watch does pretty well, roughly the same as other fitness trackers. The only thing I haven't tested here is if it counts steps when it's not supposed to count steps. So what I've seen, for instance, for Fitbits is that they tend to count a lot of steps when they're not supposed to count steps. For instance, when I'm hanging my laundry or when I'm on my home trainer, so actually on a stationary bike, I still get a lot of steps. And this is something I'll test in a future video with the Apple Watch. Overall, my first results indicate that the Apple Watch is great at tracking your heart rate, much better than some other devices I tested recently. When it comes to sleep tracking, it still lags a bit behind some other devices. Though it could accurately detect when I was awake, it doesn't track any of your sleep stages. In future videos, I'll test different apps that use the sensors of the Apple Watch to do exactly this. The Apple Watch also seems to be good at counting your steps. Though in future videos, I'll have to test if it doesn't overcount steps so that it doesn't count steps when it's not supposed to count steps. For instance, when you're doing your laundry or packing your dishwasher. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Also, this is just the first set of tests I did. In future videos, I'll do more detailed analysis of each of the individual features of the Apple Watch. For now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.